When you expand the first pair of binomials, what do you get? You get a squared minus b squared, right? The difference of two squares. If you're really sharp today, you might also recognize the second one. What's the second one? It's, it's the difference not of squares, the difference of cubes. Yeah? Um, you might be able to predict based on this pattern that I'm trying to establish, and you should be able to also verify by expanding it out. Once you do this guy, you get a whole bunch of things that cancel, and all you're left with is a to the 4, take away b to the 4. Okay? Huh. Just before we leave this result, I want to point out, number one, the way that it grows, right? The way that it grows, these guys stay the same, but this thing gets longer and longer and longer, right? To try and match up to these terms. Um, that thing that grows longer and longer and longer, here and then here and then here. Humor me for a second. What's the power here? And how many terms are there here? Here. Uh, well, it's, a, it's a binomial, right? So, what's the power here? And how many terms are here? One more time. Power? Number of terms. Good. Keep that in the back of your mind. Okay. Now, at the beginning of this double lesson, I introduced you to a different way of writing the definition of first principles without H's, without H's. Instead, and I'm going to ask you to write this down because as I was walking around to some of you, you didn't have it, so I'm going to point it out to you again. If I think about, instead of H's, an X and a C, another coordinate that is nearby, okay, then I can write the derivative, the gradient function as the limit as c gets closer to x, do you see it's the same idea, right? h getting closer to 0 is the same as c sort of climbing down to get to x. The limit as c approaches x, what's the rise this time? Have a look at the rise. It's, uh, it's this distance, isn't it? Which is the difference between f of c and f of x. So that's my numerator. What's my denominator? Yeah, it's just x2 minus x1, which is just c take away x. That is the run. Okay. Now, the reason why I'm drawing your attention to this is because it is particularly useful to prove a more efficient way of going about all of this differentiating that you've been doing. Okay. Now, please don't get me wrong. First principles is important. In fact, we're going to return to first principles again and again every time we learn to differentiate a new kind of thing. So you cannot leave this behind, you must understand it. But, it's slow as, so it would be great if we had a more efficient way. So what I want to do is consider, at the moment everything we've been dealing with has been powers of x. Okay. So if you want to put a little subheading under this, it's differentiating powers of x. I mean like x squared and x cubed and x to the 4 and all that kind of thing. Okay. So generically speaking, every power of x is x to the power of some number, right? So if I want to differentiate, there's my differential operator, right? x to the power of some number, okay? m where n's anything we like at the moment, okay? Then I'm going to appeal to first principles, but I'm going to do it this way. I'm going to do it this way, and you will see why this way of setting it out, even though it points to the same reality, rise over run, is going to be a little more useful to us in this case. Can someone help me work out? After you write limit as c approaches x, for this particular function, what is going to be inside the limit? Numerator? Any takers? What is f of c in this case? If this is f of x, f of c, f of c means everywhere you saw an x before, you're going to substitute in c. Right? So instead of x to the power of n, it's going to be c to the power of n. Right? Same thing with this guy, except that's just f of x by definition. And then on the denominator, you get this guy. How are you feeling so far? You're right. All I've done is just a bit of substitution. Okay. Now at this point here. 
Remember how we looked at difference of squares and difference of cubes and then difference of whatever you call these things, okay? You can see that's kind of what's happening here, right? It's the difference between two powers and the powers are the same, okay? Now, I'm not going to do a fancy proof for you, but it's not that hard to guess that if I had a to the m take away b to the m, we'll have a look at the pattern. What do you think the first thing will be? It's probably going to be a minus b, right? Okay, what's going to follow? Have a look carefully. Look at these numbers and look at how they relate to these numbers. This is one power less than, right? It has to be because we're going to multiply by this guy. Does that make sense? So how, how do I write that? It's going to be n minus 1, 1 less. So this will be a to the n minus 1. When you go to the right, what happens to the a terms? What happens to their powers? They get smaller. We know this from binomial theorem, right? What about the powers of b? What happens to them? They get bigger. So the next one will be a to the n minus 2, because it's getting smaller. And then there will be a b. The next one will be a to the n minus 3, because it's still getting smaller. How many b's will, be there, will there be now? There will be, there'll be two, right? There are no b's here. There's one b here. There's two b's there. Do you agree? What will the very last term be? B to the b to the n minus one, right? There's always one less because it's got to multiply by this guy when it all expands out. B to the n minus one. Okay. So what does that look like in this case? Well, this is the limit as c approaches x of what? Have a look. The first bit's easy to write. It's just the small brackets. The a minus b in this case will be c minus x. Ah, now you see why I wrote it like this. Because I cannot evaluate the limit here while this denominator is there. Because the denominator will be zero if c and x are the same thing. Do you agree with that? But now that I've got this on the numerator, I can do some cancelling, which is what we've been doing with all the limits we've had so far. What will I end up with on the right hand side? Instead of, um, instead of C's, I'll have X's. Sorry, instead of A's, I'll have C's. And instead of B's, I'll have X's. Do you agree? So what's that going to look like? I guess there will be C to the N minus 1. And then the C's climb down in power, don't they? So this will be C to the N minus 2. And how many X's? One of them, right? The, the X's now, not B's. Then the, the C's are going to keep climbing down. So this is C to the power of? n minus 3, and how many x's are there? They're climbing up. And then I've established the pattern dot dot dot. What will the very last term be? x to the n minus 1, just like my b to the n minus 1. Oh. Are you okay with me so far? This is a lot of terms, but stay with me. The pattern is just like we've been dealing with for binomial theorem. So it shouldn't be too dangerous for us. Okay. Now the point of me factorizing it this way is because, cool, I've got a c minus x on the top and a c minus x on the bottom, so they can both go. What does that leave you with? Here we go. Now, this is the brilliant part. I love this. Watch this. Okay. I have rearranged and factorized in this way so that I no longer have the c minus x on the denominator. Now that that's the case, I can actually evaluate this thing. I can actually happen when C, I can actually work out what happens when C does turn into X. What's this thing become? Well, the C's gonna turn into an X, right? So it's gonna be this, do you agree? What about this, what's this gonna do? This will be X to the N minus two, X to the N minus two times X to the one. And then this C will become what? All, all the C's are turning into X. Do you agree? So this is X minus, N minus 3, X squared, dot, 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 dot. That guy has no C terms in it, so it just stays the way it is. Okay, now come back, come back, come back. Difference of squares, how many terms? Difference of cubes, how many terms? Difference of powers of 4, how many terms? So I'm doing difference of these things. So how many terms are there? There are n of them. Okay. 
So what have we just established? What have you just established? That if you have a power of x, any power you like, then all you have to do is have a look. Let's try this out with this guy because this was the first one we did, right? There's the power up there. I'm choosing n equals 2. So my derivative, my gradient function will be write that power as the number at the front and then what do you do to the power? It goes down by 1. Do you see that? Like so. Which of course is 2x, which we got before, right? Now, there are other results we've seen which amazingly this also works with. Do you remember we did this at the start of the double before you got your papers back? You can write this as a power of x. What's the power of x? It's minus 1, right? So I'm going to give it a go with this. This is amazing because n equals minus 1 shouldn't work with this expansion. It shouldn't work. This is some, one of the really nice times when it just works anyway. What's going to happen? That's my n, right? So I'm going to write n x to the n minus 1, which is minus 2, which is exactly what you found by first principles. One more. What was the other one I started you off with? This lesson. Square root of x, right? Well, the square root of x is also a power of x. What power? So I'm going to write n x to the n minus 1. Just watch out for this one, though. Here's the n. Here's the x. What's the n minus 1? Just watch out. It's negative a half. So that means it's going to be on the denominator, because it's negative, and it's going to be a square root, because it's to the power of a half, which is exactly what you got before. 